This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Mark Magnuson. Hello and welcome to Ag Matters PM on the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Mark Magnuson. Today is Friday, January 26, 2024, and we're so glad you can join us for today's show. And in today's show, I have the latest Iowa Ag News headlines. We'll also hear from the new president of the Iowa Pork Producers Association, Matt Gent. Before we get to the news headlines, it's time for our closing market summary. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. At the end of another trading day, we are joined now by Kurt Kimmel of agmarket.net for our closing market analysis. Kurt, what did we see take place in the grains today? It's Friday again, so naturally a little bit lower. Uh, it kind of felt like the world grain buyers are filling their shopping carts elsewhere losing a little bit of export interest uh, for the most part. Uh, kind of uh, started out with the wheat news, I guess, is the best way to start the thing. China approved uh, importing or purchasing Argentine wheat. Uh, it's not a big, uh, big, big, big uh, wheat uh, buyer, but uh, I think there's around 3 million metric tons uh, could be shuffled around the world. But just the fact that uh, they're shopping elsewhere kind of took the oomph out of the wheat market. Plus two, a little wetter forecast. In fact, a lot wetter forecast is what we've seen here for the wheat growing region. So wheat was kind of uh, one of the anchors here. But then soybeans too, it uh, just had no giddy up and go. Earlier in the week, we were quite a bit excited about what we were seeing. Uh, but then all of a sudden here midweek, we just kind of reversed down and followed through to the downside here going into Friday's close. Saw a 100,000 ton meal cake sale so there's a little interest there but we're just not seeing the big million metric ton purchases or even regular routine businesses uh, that we usually see this time of year as they need to get some purchases on the books here to get this stuff shipped out before the boats go to the uh, southern hemisphere uh, for the most part and start taking uh, some of their products out of that region but southern hemisphere uh, the brazilian bean basis is widening or get bids getting weaker as their harvest so starts to ramp up they're lower six percent complete with harvest yields aren't the best but there's optimism the later as we go in here yields will improve and then, of course the old same news before argentina and paraguay is going to make up for uh some of that uh shortfall maybe uh next week uh, that argentine forecast if it says stays a little dry we can have maybe a little bit of reverse uh, psychology starting to kick in uh, on, on that crop. But it'd have to be a major, major hot dry real quick here to uh, zap the total Brazilian, Argentine, and Paraguay uh, production numbers. End of the month next week, uh, the funds continue to be heavily, heavily short. Uh, the market in through here, back in the day, it used to be your trend's your friend. Well, the trend is down, but it seems like the funds are your friend. The funds kind of been uh, steamrolling the market here, giving everybody a little hope and kind of taking it away uh, for the most part. So see what happens there uh, as we move into uh, a month in here, see if they can get some type of green light signal. Uh, the only other thing to kind of uh, look at is uh, basically the 24. Uh, guys are pretty well dialed into that. Estimates are coming out as they kind of get geared up for that. Uh, we'll have the March planning intentions report at the end of March. It's a long ways away, but average corn guess or looking at corn acres being down one and a half to two million acres, uh, bean acres up anywhere from 1.5 to 3 million acres. So with the high input costs on the uh, crop, particularly corn, versus beans, uh, it's, it's like, what's the lesser of the two evils down here at these lower levels? It's kind of tough to get too excited about going to the field here this spring. But the forecast is warmer and drier here 
uh, as we move into the first part of February. Technically, uh, well, had a kind of a reversal down here this week. Uh, the green market ran into some resistance. If you're a moving average follower, about 20 day moving average pretty well caught the upside there. So if we're going to have some giddy up and go and some short covering, we need to move above this uh, this week's highs. Uh, we saw the corn market, March corn, felt heavy, but we did finish three quarters of a cent higher. Soybeans finished four cents lower for the week, and the wheat market was actually up seven cents on the weekly scale. So it felt a lot heavier than that. We did a local farm show just uh, east of us here, about uh, 40 mile, uh, call it the Gordyville Farm Show. If you look on your map, Route 136, it's between Rantoul and Gifford, Illinois. Uh, visit for a lot of producers and the common theme, like everywhere else, they, as the market goes down, you never have enough sold, but there's quite a grain not been uh, priced yet. And so as we move forward in through here, the, the challenge for producers is going to be clean up this old crop and get started on this 24 crop. And then, Kurt, with the livestock side of things today, I noticed a lot of green on the screens at midday. Is that how we finished up today? Boy, that's a bright spot in here as a livestock producer. We're, we're seeing some recovery here. We we, we build a base uh, on the charts, and we're starting to creep higher. Uh, uh, products starting to uh, perform a little better. There's a little bit more export uh, interest. Uh, so that's been the bright spot in here, uh, the February Fats finished up over four bucks on the weekly scale. Uh, the February hogs up over four dollars too. So we're seeing some giddy up here in the meat complex. The uh, cattle inventory report that'll be the next uh, major uh, look forward to here to give us some a little bit more of a longer term uh, outlook on numbers. Then plus two with these lower grain prices, it continues to give uh, livestock feeders a little bit of an edge here. A little bit better uh, uh, picture as far as the inputs go uh, there, but it won't be long. We'll be in cookout season, so bring it on. Kirk Kimmel of AgMarket.net, our guest here today. Kirk, what's the best way for our viewers to get in touch for more marketing information? AgMarket.net. Click on Intel. That's where most of our uh, research is posted. Uh, take a peek at it. Or we're in Central Illinois here. One eight hundred. 779-1515. Lots of great resources from the team at agmarket.net. Kurt, thanks so much for the time here today. As always, appreciate it. And we'll talk to you again soon. You bet. Have a good weekend. Thank you to Kurt Kimmel of agmarket.net for our closing market summary. Let's check the closing numbers now, which can be found under our market tab on our website at iowaagnet.com. March corn down five and a half at 446 and a quarter. March soybeans down 13 and three quarters at 1209 and a quarter. March soybean meal down nine dollars and twenty cents at 349 even. March soybean oil up 40 cents at 4693. Chicago wheat down 12 even at six dollars and a quarter cent. Minneapolis wheat down five and a half at 703 and a half. Kansas City hard red wheat down 12 and a quarter at 624 and three quarters. March oats down three quarters of a cent at 363 and three quarters. On the Merck, February live cattle up 72 cents at 178.45. March feeder cattle up $1.52 at 239.70. February lean hogs up 62 cents at 74.92. February pork cutout up 10 cents at 87.45. And Class 3 milk up 21 cents at 16.07. And that's our market coverage for today. It's time now to hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soybean Checkoff. And when we come back, it is the latest Iowa Ag News headlines where we will hear from the new IPPA president, Matt Chen. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. You are watching Ag Matters PM, and it is time now for the Iowa Ag News headlines. Iowa Secretary of Agriculture Mike Nag encouraged Iowa horticulture food crop producers to participate in a statewide industry survey, which is aimed at capturing fresh data on the diversity, growth, and economic impact of horticultural food crop production in the state of Iowa. This is the first Iowa survey of its kind in nearly a decade. The Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship is partnering with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach and the United States Department of Agriculture, National Agricultural Statistics Service, as well as other industry stakeholders in the effort. 
The survey, which is called the 2024 Iowa Commercial Horticulture Survey for Food Crops, was mailed to approximately 3,500 known Iowa horticulture crop producers earlier this week. The goal of the survey is to capture feedback from producers of commercial horticultural food crops in Iowa, and that includes fruits, nuts, vegetables, berries, herbs, honey, maple syrup, and mushrooms. The deadline for participation in the survey, April 30th of 2024. Now, participation is voluntary, but cooperation is critical towards developing an accurate assessment of specialty food crop production in the state of Iowa. The information provided by producers will be considered confidential and will only be reported as aggregate totals or averages. More information available online through the Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship's website. A blast of cold weather in the Corn Belt sent ethanol production down 22% last week to its lowest point in three years. Bloomberg says America's output of the corn-based biofuel missed all of its survey estimates while stockpiles hit the highest level since March. The Energy Information Administration says the rise in stockpiles was the eighth straight week of increases. Ethanol production dropped to 18,000 barrels a day during the week, which ended on January 19th. That was down from 1.054 million barrels during the previous week and the lowest level since the seven days ending on February 19th, 2021. The Midwest, which produces the most ethanol in the country, had production fall to 766,000 barrels per day, a significant drop from 1.001 million a week earlier. The EIA says that Rocky Mountain production declined, East Coast production was unchanged, and Gulf Coast production rose by 21,000 barrels a day. Inventories reached 25.815 million barrels. And the Iowa Pork Producers Association introduced Matt Gent as its new president during this week's 51st Annual Pork Congress held here in Des Moines. Uh, it's been a great week. Um, lots of conversations with producers and consumers and, and uh, interviewers like yourself and uh, just lots to, lots to do. Matt takes over as president following Trish Cook, who now moves into the role of past president. Gent says he has been on the IPPA Board of Directors since 2018. Producer from Southeast Iowa, Washington County. Um, home is Wellman, Iowa, and uh, my family has a farrow to finish hog operation. Uh, I'm a third generation farmer, and uh, uh, my boy and my nephews, hopefully, and nieces will be uh, fourth generation. He says he has learned an immense amount of information about the relationship between the IPPA and producers in the state in his six years on the board. When I joined six years ago, I had literally knew nothing about Iowa pork. And that was part of the reason why I wanted to join is, you know, where, do, where does our producer money go to every day and, and what are they doing with it? And, and uh, so I wanted to learn. And it takes a couple years to learn the organization and you sit back and you figure it out. And then from there, it's how do we, how do, we do what's best for the producers, the consumers, and, and keep the organization moving forward. As a producer, Gent says that fellow producers can stay ahead of the curve by staying informed about all aspects of the pork industry. There is a lot of producers like myself that weren't informed, and there is so much that I've learned behind the scenes of what's happening, whether it's <clears throat> here in Des Moines, out in uh, D.C. I mean, it's just as incredible the things that producers don't know these organizations do. He says despite 2023 being a tough year financially for producers, there is optimism on the horizon. Definitely. 2023 was rough for all producers. Nobody's going to doubt that. Um, 2024, we, we are very optimistic. We are still a, uh, a cheap, economical source of protein. We have that going for us. No matter what, um, when the consumer is looking for a cheap protein in today's economic world, pork is your answer. And we need to push that even harder than we have been. And we need to innovate new products and, and just strive to do what the consumer wants. Thank you once again to Matt Gent of the Iowa Pork Producers Association for joining me at the Pork Congress show this week. That wraps up today's news headlines and brings us to the end of today's show. You can find all of our content on our website at iowaagnet.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, X, TikTok, and LinkedIn. And you can find previous episodes of AM, PM, and the rest of our video content on our YouTube channel. Don't forget as well, our free twice daily market podcast, which are found on Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, and Podbean. From the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network studios in Des Moines, I'm Mark Magnuson. On behalf of Riley Smith, Dustin Huffman, and Andy Peterson, 
we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.